The finest set two packs just dropped in the MLB The Show Shop. These are the second, I think, last set of packs we're going to be getting today and throughout the week. Team Affinity comes out tomorrow, so this would be our last lead up to that. Let's go through the pack, go through all the cards we got. We have a lot of really good ones, just like set one, and go through which ones are probably worth adding to your team's ones that may be worth passing on. Let's get into it. All right, so here we go, set two. I think the first five cards are in the rare round and the rest are in the base round. Let's go card by card. The pack costs 30k. Honestly, if this were me, I wouldn't really be buying the packs. I would focus on buying players, especially if you are anticipating completing the finest collection. But you know, the packs could be valuable even if you get one rare round because they are about 100k right now. But let's go player by player and see which ones are the best and worth it. First, we have Austin Riley, who seems like a very top tier third baseman. Is he the best? I don't think so, but looks like a top few third baseman. The reverse splits make him really good. 123, 119, especially when you face the majority of righties in this game. Very nice. The defense is great. The arm strength is perfect for third. And he's got 71 speed, which is a little underrated. Um, I think this is definitely a top three third base, I would say right now. And if you like that righty bat with reverse splits, he is a great one to use. And even versus lefties, he is still good. Could be better, but he's definitely very solid. I like this card a lot. Next, we have Starling Marte, center field option. He's probably best at center field with the diamond defense and that arm strength. Very well-rounded card. I just think there are other good cards like Aaron, Mays, Mantle that are better than him, but it doesn't mean anything. You know, Marte is a fun card. He doesn't get too many quirks, Day Player and Rally Monkey. I mean, they're solid quirks, but not must-haves. I wouldn't use them for that purpose. But for you A's fans or Marlins fans looking for a theme team card, this card should be top tier. I just don't think he makes my outfield right now. I would try to treat him equivalently to that Brandon Nimmo card, except he might be a little worse in the power department. Next, we have Carlos Correa, who maybe my pick is the best card in this bunch. He's the Ernie Banks type shortstop for sure. A little slower, um, but he does have better hitting attributes, I think, versus righties or at least very close to Ernie Banks. The Ashby's versus lefties are also solid. I bet the comparison to Ernie is pretty close, but Correa, I think he has a very good swing. A lot of people like his stance and swing. And if you like the 96, this one's definitely worth a try. He'll have diamond defense at second, third, as well as short. So if you want to use him at third base, and honestly, this could be a better third base option with the diamond defense and 99 arm strength there. And since he's a little slower, if you don't like that type of guy at short, you definitely don't have to use them there. Very nice card. Next, we have Yuli Gurriel. And wow, this card actually looks pretty nasty. The contact is elite. The power versus right, solid. Power versus left, pretty solid as well. They gave him goal defense. I mean, the arm strength is low, so his purpose is probably in first or second base. But then again, this card does look pretty well-rounded. I like Yuli Swing. I used some of his card earlier in the year in BR and such. Again, though, first base is a premium power position. And 97 and 108 isn't bad, but there is definitely better. So he would be definitely a little lower for me as a first baseman. But at the end of the day, a great hitting card for sure. 99, Brandon Woodruff. So he is getting this card, which I think is basically a lock that the Brewers card is going to be Corbin Burns, which is a fat dub. He actually looks pretty solid. Stamina hits per nine, all top tier. The issue with this card is going to be the pitch mix. It may be a little difficult to pitch with a four seam and two seam. No meta sinkers or cutters or anything of that sort, but you could probably still pitch solid with them. No outlier or anything for those who care. Maybe not a top, top tier starter. Very solid one, though, if you're looking for one. Next, we have Jesse Winker. I'm glad to give him a card because he is an elite bet. I don't think this is a card people are going to start in their teams with the 77 fielding and the, you know, the not so great splits versus left. He's 98, 105 is if he's solid. But just saying, you have to use this card on your bench. Pinch hitting quirks. The really good splits for his righties. This is a must pick up for 10K for a bench bet, which is a very valuable niche getting that really good lefty bench bet. And Winker, his swing is just absolute butter. I've been a big fan of his swing since day one of being MLB The Show. Next, we have Frank Schwindel. Honestly, I would say he looks pretty comparable to Yuli Gurriel, but the thing that Schwindel has is better power versus lefties. He has similar contact to Yuli, but he has a sacrifice in defense and speed. I, if you guys like the 95, I know a lot of people did. Schwindel should actually mash. And if you use him versus lefties, very good. Um, I think this is definitely a, a good first base buy for 10K. If you're looking for that still, or at least a bench bat versus left. Would it be rushing if you have someone like Lou Gehrig or Babe Ruth or someone you're really loving at first? This card does seem really good, though. I like it. John Means gets a 99 overall, which I think is great. He had a great year this year. Um, the hits per nine is definitely a little low. The pitch mix isn't ideal. 
I don't think you should be really rushing to get this card unless you need an easy to earn starter when you're first starting the game. But you know, this card could definitely play okay. Um, but again, I don't think a top tier starter with this pitch mix for those looking for a really good starter. Next, we have Garrett Whitlock. And I know he had a really good year for the Red Sox. He's got Outlier on the sinker. That's nasty. Outlier on the sinker, change up slider. This is a great reliever to add to the bullpen. But I will say for a reliever, 103 hits per nine is a little bit low. Definitely a little bit of like an iffy one to use. The pitch mix is still legit. And I would be trying in my bullpen. Especially if you need like one or two relievers in the back end of it other than your big guys. Speaking of relievers, I think my personal favorite card of the bunch may be Mr. Jonathan Loizaga here. He's got outlier on the sinker again. His curveball should be absolutely cheddar. He's got 99 break on it. I'm not a big curveball guy, but Loizaga's curve is filthy. They also have a slider, so he's got the Gray Velo slider. I feel like he's like Whitlock, but he has a little bit better hits per nine and one more pitch in that curveball, which could be really valuable. I like this card. I would try him. No Yankee fan bias. He could be a lot like that Clay Holmes card and just be absolutely nasty. And those are the cards. Honestly, looking at the pack, I probably wouldn't be buying the packs. I think the top three here are definitely pretty good. They're fun for your, your theme teams and fans of those teams. But I feel like the first pack may have had more well-rounded cards like Avi Garcia was very well-rounded. and Definitely a better starting outfielder type. Um, but guys like Riley are good at third. Marte is a good outfielder if you want that type of player. Correa, I think, is the guy to get if you're to pick one card. And then Winker is a great bench bet. Same with Schwindel and Loai is again Whitlock are great bullpen additions. I'm going to pick up all of the base rounds while they're like sub 10k. Get them for cheap for the upcoming collection very likely tomorrow. And I think this is a good way to prepare. Make sure you get these cards for cheap today. Keep in mind, though, there is a good chance these packs are included within Team Affinity 3. I know a lot of people were asking me the other day. They tweeted out saying the players aren't in Team Affinity Season 5. But I think they're going to be included in TA5 amongst the packs. They like to give these packs out for free. I doubt they're going to be hard to earn. And it would be valuable to at least get the base rounds now. But if you don't get all of the rare rounds, I wouldn't fret. And I would maybe pick them up later on when TA5 comes. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you like if you did. Tomorrow, we're going to be covering all the Team Infinity cards, giving my first impressions, and go through tips throughout the week on how you can complete it in the most efficient way as possible. And it's going to be a fun week of ahead of testing out all these cards because these cards look really good and I'm really excited for the teams to come out. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Have a great rest of your day. I'll be streaming today if you want to come hang out. Twitch.tv slash scan. And yeah, hopefully I'll see you there. Have a great rest of your day. Deuces.